get the ball rolling. Just wonder if anyone in the comments, anyone out there viewing this, if you can hear me, please type yes in the comments. Uh, the last time I did a live stream, I asked that question and no one typed anything in the comments. Like I waited like five minutes. So I just was like, okay, well, no one can hear me then. So I ended it. A few minutes later, I get an email from a viewer who said, we could hear you just fine. But the individual didn't want to type. They would rather write me an email telling me that than typing Y-E-S in the comments, which I don't quite understand that. Uh, but hey. Hello, our Neo Life. Can you hear me? Yes, awesome. Good, good, good. Okay, welcome to Coffee and Correct Grammar. Got my coffee, my favorite mug. It's a little bit beat up. My favorite Arizona mug. I don't even know what it originally said. Well, it's unfortunate that I can't see anyone out there, but, but you can see me and people are more comfortable that way. So that's why I do it. Usually I like to do live streams like this because you can't see me. I mean, I can't see you. So you can't see me. So, I mean, that kind of levels the, the field there, but I know people like to, to see things, to sense things in that way. So. I'll do it. I do it this way also. So if you have any grammar questions, pop them in the comments field. I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you've been catching the most recent editions of my audio podcast for the grammar shoot. I've got some great feedback about the most recent editions of that podcast especially the ones about authoritarianism and correctness, which are concepts for myself have never, ever sat well with me. I mean, I went to seven years of Catholic school, authoritarian Catholic school, and back then in the 70s and the 80s, man, it was a whole different world in school. We're talking about corporal punishment. We're talking about all kinds of crazy stuff that went on there. And that's part and parcel of an authoritarian construct. If you look at a prison, look at all the messed up stuff that goes on there. If you look at the military, look at all the messed up stuff that goes on there. I mean, and by messed up, I'm not being disrespectful to any member of the military. What I'm talking about is the structure of it, the way they train and break down an individual's psyche, literally break it down and rebuild it back up. Most times it's a painful process, I'm told. And you know, it's the same thing with the prison system. It's supposed to be a correctional facility, right? Right, correcting what? I think a correctional facility builds better criminals is what I think. And then you have those criminals and then you have the the government doing what they do. Um, I won't go any further into that. I don't want to stray too far here. So the grammar. The grammar is an awesome tool for one to be able to maintain a position of facts and correctness. If you have closure on the grammar. If you can give and share closure on the grammar to anyone at any level of knowledge. And you also be in a position to where a mental condition of state where if someone approaches you and says that you are causing harm to them, you have to give them the benefit of the doubt. You have to have humility. And say, okay, how, how is this? How is what I'm doing causing you harm? How can we fix this? 
I apologize. How can I make it correct? You have to have that humility as well. And that's the thing that most people miss in this. They just want to go around all blustery, all yelling and screaming. And it's a world of <laughs> correctness is coming. We're going to make them run out of the courtroom screaming. That's an authoritarian wet dream, I guess. I don't know. It's not what I'm into. Let me get into these comments here. Yes, I am new to this. I have also a group created for Romania, and they want to learn about it. Problem is Romanian authorities are so corrupt, they do not recognize anything. Well, there are no fiction entities anywhere, Romanian or otherwise, that would recognize, recognize correct sentence structure. No one will. But that's not the point. I mean, think about it psychologically. How are you going to ask the fiction to recognize a fact? They're not going to. Fact and fiction can never meet. That's the whole thing. I mean, I think people have a, some people, it's just, or perhaps a, a, a fictitious manner of whatever concept is being perpetrated by certain groups within this quantum grammar contingent that, that's not what it's about. The fiction system is never going to recognize it because it's fiction. Fiction is not going to recognize a fact because as soon as it, as soon as it realizes there's a fact there, it runs away. It, it dissipates. It goes on vacation. I don't know how any other way to explain it. Hence the, the stories of judges running out of a courtroom. That is what the fiction usually does if they know that you know what you're talking about. But if you have any doubt and you don't know what you're talking about, it's like water up against a dam. If there's a crack, the fiction, the water is going to find that crack, go right to it and bust you open, and it's not going to work. So you have to know what you're doing. I have meditation for child Medi meditation, I think you mean mediation, for child custody today. Any tips on how to speak or facts or correct speech? If you don't know it now, you're not going to know it in an hour. Um, I wish you well on your journey into that fiction court. I don't give legal or lawful advice, by the way. I'm a grammar tutor. So if you have a specific grammar question, I'd be more than happy to answer it here having to do with the grammar, but not anything to do with like your specific situation. Now, if you want to learn correct sentence structure for the next time you enter this situation, like if you plan for it um, and you want to study it, this YouTube channel right here has over 300 videos. All the sum total of my correct sentence structure knowledge is on this channel in 300 videos. I took the time to create them. It's up to you if you want to invest the time to study them. Or, of course, you can check out the pinned comment and contact me at my email address, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, and request a 10 to 15 minute consultation uh, to answer any grammar questions you have or to apply for a correct grammar workshop. That's up to you. But I definitely wish you well. I would never, ever suggest that anyone go into those foreign vessels and dry dock. Fortunately for me, I've been able to handle every single case that I've ever had through my postal court. And that's just a fancy way of saying through my mailbox. <laughs> if my fact can't be seen in fiction, how do you not get the kids taken away? Again, uh, you appear to have a theoretical knowledge of correct sentence structure. So until you get a basis, a rudimentary closure on the grammar, like a beginner's level rudimentary closure on it, um, it's going to be this way. You're going to have these questions. But once you get that rudimentary closure, you will have the answer to the question you just asked me. You will know how to do that. I don't know any other way to put it. 
I'm saying this channel is about the grammar. What you're asking about is not about the grammar. It's about a situation. And if you don't have that grammar knowledge, you're not going to be able to handle that situation with the grammar. You understand? It's, it's kind of like someone who's not, and I'll use this. I always use these analogies. Someone who suddenly has to get in a UFC cage and fight mixed martial arts, but they've never trained in it ever. But suddenly they have to get in there and fight. How are they going to learn to fight in one day? It's just not going to happen. And they're fighting against a professional who's had seven years of training. Okay. It's, that's the best way I can put it. You have to put the time in and train before you even think about using this stuff. Now, what you said about must facts be written, I think over, the overarching gist of the question would be, or how can I say this? The overarching gist of what you're asking, I feel is more like it's a volition question. What is your volition? If your volition contains peace, neutrality, honor, grace, rule one, rule equal, um, then things will turn out the way they should. Now, when you walk into a fiction courtroom and you're just throwing yourself at the mercy, you've been summoned. So now you're, you're subordinate to them because you're following their, their orders and you go in there. They can pretty much, you're, you're at their mercy, pretty much. Now you can play their little games. You can walk in there and, you know, I know people that have used common law and things like that, but with varying degrees of success or failure. I once, uh, I once was friends with a guy who at the time he had no correct sentence structure knowledge, but he mailed himself up to the judge's chambers using common law techniques. It was a pretty amazing story that he told me. And of course, I will not divulge names or anything like that. There's confidentiality in place. But I think it's a wonderful story. And I hope that someday he gets out here in the public and tells some of his stories because he's been in the trenches. Matter of fact, he's been in many more trenches than I have just using common law. And it's wonderful to think what will happen if uh, he ever chooses to get closure on the grammar, on correct sentence structure with the flag mechanics and the postal mechanics and use what he learned through his experiences with common law, but using correct sentence structure, who knows what, what one could achieve in that uh, capacity. Let me get back to these comments. I'm, I'm getting behind here. Greetings, Jason. I see others not using all caps, but like this for the claim of the claim is with the claim by the claim with uppercase letter on each word. This confused me. What's your volition? Ah, the old capitals question. You must be coming from the Glossa channel, Justinian deception sector, huh? I've made multiple videos about my closure on it. And you know what? I'm going to go on my channel right now. I'm going to search one up and. I'm going to share it with you so you can go watch that. Because I feel, you know, I am here to answer your grammar questions, and this is a grammar question, but I feel like people that come on here have not really, it's fair to say they haven't watched probably even one or two of my videos, which is okay. I mean, let me find uh Ah, here's one I did. This is a good one. Why do you use dog Latin? I got one for you. Uh, colon A. Forgive me if, if I don't know who you are, because if you're not using your correct name or a variant of such, I don't know who you are. I mean, if you're using, you know, nom de guerres and avatars or whatever 
I understand the, the reason behind it. A lot of people don't like to use their correct names on the internet for whatever reason. Uh, but apologies if I don't know who you are. Here's the link. I'm going to pop the link in there. Please check this seven-minute video out, and it will give you all the closure you need on the capitalization issue. Thank you for the question. Okay, so back to the comments. That question was supposed to be together with the other. Sorry for the spacing. Like the crack in the dam, the fiction makes you fight so hard to get them to crack. This Joe Smith. Actually, this Joe Smith, thank you for the question. Or, I mean, sorry, thank you for the comment. This gives me an opportunity to bring the psychology back into it. It's not about fighting. I mean, I know I use mixed martial arts and, and fighting analogies a lot. But when it comes down to it, the grammar, it's not about fighting. I mean, of course, if you're in a life or death situation, then it's a fight. Then it's a fight. There's no doubt about it. But walking into those situations, I never think about fighting or violence or aggression or anything like that. I'm going in purely in an educational capacity. Only thinking about me, my position, and being aware of others and their demeanors, how they're looking at me, they're sizing me up, what what have, what sensations am I getting from their body language, from their gestures, from the way they're talking, their tone of voice, and then I know how to approach them. Sometimes I don't even have to use correct sentence structure. Sometimes I do. And when I do, what usually happens and what I've found, not, actually every single time I've done it, with a vasily, they have no idea what I'm talking about. And so I come in and as an educational capacity, I start explaining it to them. And once that they see, even if they don't know what I'm talking about, once they see that I know what I'm talking about, they don't want to deal with me anymore. They just want to get away from me and move on to the next person. So that's pretty much the bottom line of my experience. Once they know that I know what I'm talking about, they don't want anything to do with me. They're going to help me any way they want to. They just want to get me out of their hair. I'm not going to hassle me. That's my experience. So the psychology of it is I'm not going in there to fight. I'm not going in there to find cracks in fiction because I know there's cracks in fiction. It's all in the adverbs and the adjectives. <laughs> the modifications, That's those are the cracks. The particles of negation, all kinds of cracks. It's not easy. I mean, it's easy to find cracks in a fiction. There's no doubt about it. But the other way around, not so much. There are lawyers out there who use the grammar in favor of their client. Are there lawyers out there? It's their way for this guy to find a lawyer who uses the grammar. That's an interesting question. I don't know any attorneys or lawyers out there who know this. I have dealt with attorneys for fiction purposes. And I have used certain techniques just to see what they would say. They never say word one about it. I've autographed the punctuated name. And an attorney just wouldn't, didn't even touch it. So I have no idea. My best guess is that no, there is not, because the lawyers are a member of the same club that the judges are members of. And correct sentence structure busts that to pieces. So why would they use it? It cannot be used for malicious purposes in that, in that sense. So my best answer to that is no. Why would the fiction come in contact with a fact. Hey, Captain, do you know where I can get a copy of David Wynn Miller's books? Oh, Captain. Well, Captain, here's my answer to that. I am not affiliated with, with any other contract party out there, except for uh, a student of mine, Colin Ricardo, Colin Marseille, and of course, my tutor, Colin Raven, hyphen Farhad, I've been Tahiti calling out for rent, but I'm not affiliated with any other contract party out there. Least of all, anyone selling that book. Personally, as a tutor, 
I've been teaching this since February of 2018. I do not recommend that book because there are mistakes on every single page. And I challenge anyone out there to prove me wrong grammatically. So the value that I found in the book was that it has awesome ideas for templates on how to create certain documents. Whether it's like this uh, individual in the comment section, there's a, a child custody, a complete, you know, idea of how to create a child custody document. You know, I think gold, silver certificates, judges oaths, all kinds of interesting mechanics in there. Not so much to do with the grammar, but to do with how to format documents, you know, how to deal with like speeding tickets and things like that. Not how to, but how to format the document. I don't want to give anyone the wrong impression, but as far as learning the grammar, getting that book as a beginner would be just like if you were an English speaker and you wanted to learn Russian and someone gave you a textbook of Russian written only in Russian, but with mistakes on every page. That's, that's what it's like. So I do not recommend that for beginners. No MKC, 4N7DN. No idea what, uh, what you're trying to convey there, colon A period. I really am a Joe Smith. Well, thanks for sharing that, Joe. I appreciate that. How important is learning postal mechanics? Well, it's very important if you want to create document contract postal vessel court venues to view court interactions as a fight makes it fearful and fear is one of the biggest modifiers of the verb of the thinking that there is because fear doesn't exist if you think about it fear is not really tangible i mean it's tangible in the concept of in terms of grammar fear is syntax as a tangible contract word but in a as a psychological modality of navigation, it doesn't exist. It's just an idea in your head. It's always a, 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 a feeling attached to something that you think could happen that hasn't happened. It's almost like a future tense modifier. Like walking out of a grocery store at 11 o'clock at night and the parking lot is dark and you see some shadowy figure walking across over there, you may have a fear that, oh, I might get robbed here. You haven't been robbed. The only indication is that you have a feeling maybe in the back of your neck that, ooh, there's something dangerous here. And it's good to pay attention to that feeling. But the thing with the fiction is the fear cultivates that. I'm sorry, the fiction cultivates that feeling. If that makes sense. Jason, my pick is a red fox stamp photo of live life with autograph and thumbprint. Awesome, colon A. I can't see your uh, profile pic. It's so small on my screen. So I can't see anybody's profile pics, really. When facing court, knowing grammar gives you that certainty to go face their fiction and get a judge to the point where they want to get you out of their hair. Well, that's the psychological position of correct sentence structure in that I personally don't use the word judge because to me, in my construct and what I do, judge is a fiction thing. I use the word authority, but I'm going to use the ju word judge here for ease of conveyance. If you use correct sentence structure and you have closure on it, enough closure to walk into that scenario, then you would know that you are the judge in that scenario. What is the one point? What is the one by 1.9 flag? 
a flag of? There's a question for the viewers. Flag mechanic question. What is the 1 by 1 1.9 flag a flag of? What does it represent? Should a correct dictionary be attached to every document? Well, if you're making a document contract post the vessel court venue, you it's up to you to give closure to the facts on that document using correct sentence structure. So for the facts and every symbol or hieroglyph included on that document, yes, you would need to give closure to all of that in a dictionary included with the document. Like for example, I have a dictionary that's close to 2000 words written in correct sentence structure. I don't include the whole 2000 word dictionary with, with my document. I only include those things that are specific to that document. Dear friend, thank you so much for the help and knowledge you are sharing. You're very welcome. Thank you for your viewership. The way you can help me in the smallest way is to like this video, subscribe, comment on my uh, on my on my videos, turn your notifications on. Also, subscribe to my other channel, Coral Blade Grotto. Like those videos. Um, turn your notification bells on for that. That helps me get this stuff out there, and then you, in turn, help the algorithms with it. I don't know the flag question. The one by 1 1.9 flag, what does it represent? I don't know. So Joe Smith, I would have to say that your knowledge of correct sentence structure is theoretical. Is it fair to say you're a beginner? We are grateful for your time explaining the grammar. You're the only man 100% focused and we need you. Thank you, colon A. Appreciate that. Okay, Joe Smith. So let me answer your question then. I First, let me answer it using suggestions. I suggest you perhaps research um, some of those old colon David Eiffel Wynn colon Miller videos and also colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould videos prior to 2016, okay? Make sure they're before 2016, 2016 or before. From 2017 on, well, as far as colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould goes, I wouldn't suggest those videos, but prior to 2017. Go back and look at those videos and David and Russell multiple times give closure on how they captured that Title IV flag. Now I'm going to tell you my knowledge of, of what that flag is. That flag is a 1 by 1.9 grammar flag. It's the flag of the land during the time of the contract. That is what that flag is. That's why I use it on C pass C treaty. I use it on all documents because it gives jurisdiction. It shows what jurisdiction those documents are in. Okay. So what is the land during the time of the contract? Well, in a foreign vessel and dry dock courtroom, that would be the well of the court. It's the only geometric level playing field in the whole room. Everything else is on levels. That flag is the flag of the well of the court. So when you're standing there, pardon me, if you put that 
flag on the floor, meaning the a document contract postal vessel court venue on the floor and put your foot on it, so to speak, you you void all the boxes and planes, and now you are the judge of that area. That's what you when you hear David and Russell talking about a judge either runs out or the judge takes their robe off and comes down and sits in the well of the court at the table to contract on the geometric level playing field, which I can 9.9 .9 times out of 10 is not going to happen. Not these days, but that's the best I can explain it to you. That is what the one by 1.9 flag is. That's how I would explain it to a beginner. It's a flag of the land during the time of the contract. It's all about the volition. As I've said before, your grammar, your grammar can be less than perfect. Your grammar can be less than correct. But if your volition is correct, it will see you through. You can have 100% correct grammar and have malicious volition and your situation will blow up in your face. Jason, have you had success with CPAS? What do you mean by success? If by success you mean, like I, I've boarded government vessels using it. People have accepted it as picture ID. I've had to explain it on multiple occasions, what it is, what it does, and why I use it. A funny story that I'll share. Uh, one time I had to take my house companion, otherwise known as a dog, to the vet. And I left my passport wallet there, which had my CPASC treaty in it. And I went home. And then I realized I'd left it there and I called them. And I said, you know, I left my passport wallet there. Do you have it? And they said, yes, we do have it. They said, you just have to come in tomorrow. And, uh, Come and get it and just prove that you are who you are. I'm like, oh, that's no problem. So the next day I walk in and the lady at the counter is looking at me funny. And she slides it over and she opens it up. She or as she slides it over and she says, you know, we had to open this up and look at it to make sure it was you. I said, yeah, that's fine. And then she said, can I ask you a question? I said, sure, go ahead. She goes, do you work for the CIA? And she's pointing at my CPAS. I said, no, no, I don't work for the CIA. She's like, do you work for the government? I said, no, no, I don't work for the government. I, I said, this is a CPAS C treaty. This is federal documentation for the correct closure of my correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar contracts. I work with the government, meaning... I contract with them when I need to, but I don't work for anyone. I'm not subordinate to anyone. And then, you know, when I started explaining it, her eyes kind of glazed over and she was like, okay, well, thank you. And then as I'm walking out, she says, are you sure you don't work for the CIA? It was the funniest thing. This was like a couple years ago. Would an expired passport be used for the C pass with a stamp and autograph? Would an expired passport be used for the C pass? That's an absolute no, um, because the fiction has nothing to do with the fact. The C pass C treaty is a fact if you use correct sentence structure, nothing to do with the passport. Uh, the point of the story is I was carrying the CPAS C treaty in the same wallet as my fiction passport and a driving license. It actually, it's not my fiction passport. It's a fiction passport. It's not my driving license. It's a driving license. The only thing that's mine in there is the CPAS C treaty. And there's a reason for all of that being together. 
having to do with the law of salvage and all that and derelict vessels. Well, this has taken an interesting turn. Not so much grammar questions. Ah, colon A. I don't know if you watched that video or not yet, uh, but if you did, did that answer your question about the capitalization of the letters? Does anyone here know the 10 parts of speech and correct sentence structure? Does anybody here know the 10 parts of speech? I don't want to give them away or anything. <laughs> Ten parts of speech. Okay, I saw someone say that they've been watching this channel for two years. So my question to that individual, and, and I apologize, I don't remember who it was that asked the question, but if you've been studying this channel for two years, my question to you would be, um, perhaps why does your interest remain theoretical? I'm just curious as to why you haven't pulled the trigger on learning it. I started learning this grammar in the beginning of the summer of 2017. And by February of 2018, I was teaching it. Like, I like full bore committed to, to learning it. I mean, I was doing 10 to 12 hours a day study every day, listening to MP3s and everything. And, and I was very fortunate to have found a grammar tutor that was able to help lead me down the path of correct closure, which um, I achieved in a thousand hours. It took me a thousand hours. I might be a slow learner, but that's what it took me to learn this. A lot of sweat, blood, and tears. <laughs> so I'm just curious if someone's been watching this channel for two years, what, I'm just curious as to why they haven't pulled the trigger on learning it. I guess it, I could answer that on my own question using a guess that they just haven't had a reason to. I have said in the past that lots of people say they want to learn this, but once they realize how much effort it takes, then they don't want to learn it. They don't want any part of it then. Only a handful of people, students that I've had, have actually followed through and gotten to the point of 85 to 90% closure. So it has nothing really to do, I don't think, with what you call intelligence. It has to do with motivation and volition. If you don't have a reason to learn something, why would you? If you're in a place where everything's within walking distance, why would you buy a car and learn how to drive it? You know, it's kind of the same thing, I think. But that's just my opinion. I can't learn it no matter how long I listen. I only learn by doing things and have no one to use it on to do it. Jason, I don't know. I mean, again, I don't know your personal situation. I do know that you've done a workshop with me. Um, there are lots of things you can use it for. Have you created a live life claim? Have you created a domicile contract? Have you created a fate writ volition claim? Or, I mean, I think, I think, well, whatever your profession is, I won't say that here. Have you created a correct contract for your profession? I mean, there's lots of things you can use it for. This has to be creative and, and you know, logical in your own mind if you want to. There's something so basic and satisfying about it. Yes, it's very simple once you get down to it. I think that is a a huge challenge for most people is that they don't think it's simple. But the pro I think the, the issue is that the fiction is so complicated that it kind of primes someone to think that something like correct sentence structure would be more complicated, which it's not. It's way less complicated. That's what drew me to it. 
when I realized I didn't have to learn all the fiction titles, codes, rules, and regulations. <laughs> Not necessary when you use correct sentence structure. As David said, quantum is like eating an elephant. It takes time. I never heard that one. That's a pretty crazy one. Dude, I, I would never eat an elephant. They're beautiful creatures. So it's not just knowing the grammar. It's the way your volition on grammar is presented. The volition is the most important part. The grammar tech is pure. Unadulterated. It's pure. The way an individual uses it is their volition. So if you're going to use the grammar to call someone a trash, trashy bitch, I don't know if anyone's familiar with what I'm saying, that shows your volition and the type of character you are, your character. If you're going to use it to cause harm to people, it's not going to work. I can say that with 100% certainty. The only way it's going to work if you do that is if the other person buys into the fear that you're directing in their direction. It's just like authority. You can consent to someone having authority over you. And once you've given them that consent, then they can do whatever they want with you. They can direct your mind wherever they want it to go. They control you. Control. But if you're autonomous and you're your own authority, then no one can be an authority over you. However many hours you have up in the public is the amount of hours I have studied it so far. That's interesting. Well, I have over 300 videos. A lot of the most, the majority of them are very short. So in, in all your time, Jason, in studying these videos on this channel, how many document contract postal vessel court venues have you created? How many documents have you syntaxed? How many correct sentence structure documents have you created? How many, how many times have you used 12B7 through 12B1? You know, these types of things are good practice for you, for your closure on the 12B. I did an entire whole ass podcast on it, which again, you know, I, I hope everybody goes over to Anchor or Spotify or whatever your favorite podcast platform is and look for, for the Quantum Grammar Shoot and subscribe to it. Because it has a lot to do with the psychology of correct sentence structure. A lot of people like it because I tell stories on there. And if you look at the 12B7 through 12B1 podcast, that will give you an idea of how to create your own document contract postal vessel court venue. If you want to continue with the grammar and things like that, that of course would be done in a confidential with a workshop with me if you choose. That's up to you for the rule one, rule equal performances. Be happy to help you under the rule one, rule equal performances. Other than that, you know, my, the sum total of my knowledge is here on this channel and also on the Anchor uh, podcast, which gives you some idea on how to do the documents. I don't know if you're, you were aware of that podcast. I'm stunned when I hear some of these words. The volition, the heart of the character, the villain or the hero. We've all been brainwashed with the fiction language. I agree with Jason. I don't have anyone to proof my work. I know it's important. I just can't grasp the bare bones. I don't know that was there. We'll download. When studying, it's best to learn from Jason and no one else, or you will become confused and need to be taught correct, and Jason is all correct. Well, thank you for that sentiment. I, I, I am not the only teacher out there, but as far as I know, I'm the only teacher in the public. I'm the only teacher that shows their face and their correct name and does live streams. All the other tutors that I'm aware of are sort of hidden away in their certain uh, bulwarks in place that you have to get past to be taught by them. And, and a lot of the grammar channels on YouTube that are coming out now, the individuals doing those grammar channels don't put their face out there. 
don't even use their voice, their own voice. They use that computer, that goofy computer voice. And a lot of times don't even use their correct name. So this is what I offer, you know, to the public that this is me. This is my face, what I look like, my correct name. And I put myself out there. That's, I guess, well, whatever the way I sound when I say this, that's the confidence I get from the closure I have in the grammar. I'm willing to take the Pepsi challenge with anyone. Any of my documents, any of my grammar, anything. I'm good to go over here. But I appreciate that. Thank you very much for those kind words. I do suggest other people look at other other teachers, especially the men who brought it to the public, David and Russell. Look at their videos. And if you study my channel for any length of time, you're going to begin to see <laughs> that there's contradictions between what they teach and what I teach. And then when you look deeper into it, you're gonna find no contradictions in what I teach. But then when you look at their videos, you're gonna see contradictions within their videos. You're gonna see them say, well, the way a correct sentence structure, the basic correct sentence structure would be structured would be for the facts of the facts or with the facts of the facts, with the facts by the facts. It's always for, of, verb, with, of, with, by. But then later on in the same video, you'll see them use for the facts, are, with the facts, of the facts, by the facts. They're, they violate their own rules right in the same video. What I offer here is consistency. If you're looking for consistent ways to syntax, and to create correct sentence structure, I try to be as consistent as I possibly can. Anything that's a contradiction or a mistake, I take out. As soon as someone mentions it to me, I either correct it or just jettison it. He is not lending this. TJ Mars does for money. Funny thing about TJ Mars, a friend of mine shared that website with me, You Are Law. And my friend was a member of You Are Law at the time. And he allowed me to go to the special, the member's special area of the website. Now, keep in mind, my friend was paying money to You Are Law to access special materials. And what did I see in the members only area? I saw a link to my channel for correct sentence structure. So I was in the paid section of UR Law. This YouTube channel where all the videos are free. People were paying to see it on UR Law. I found that interesting. I do feel uh, I have uh, respect for TJ Mars because of the work he's put in there. He's put obviously put a lot of work into that website. So I definitely respect the work. And, you know, if he's helping people, I'm a big fan of whatever works. It doesn't have to be correct sentence structure. Correct sentence structure is a tool, one tool among many. It happens to be my specialty. Like I'm, it's my forte, uh, but there's lots of other tools out there and TJ offers some of those tools. Where should I go to get the book and lessons? And can someone pay you to write a trust? <laughs> well, of course someone can pay me to write a trust. How much is the trust worth? Don't answer that. Where should I go to get the book and lessons? I don't know what book you're talking about. As I said earlier in the, in the live stream, I don't, I'm not affiliated with anyone else and I don't, I don't recommend any book. Um, you can learn through the 300 videos on this YouTube channel available to the public. 
you can learn it there, or you can email me at the email address that I posted as a comment at the top there, and you can apply for a 10 to 15 minute video consultation with me, which is free. And then you can apply for a grammar workshop there. You can apply for one-on-one -on -one tutorship from me, if you choose. That's what I offer. Or as I said, you can learn through this YouTube channel. I invested the time and energy to make the videos. It would be contingent upon you to invest the time and energy to study them if you want to learn it from me here on this YouTube channel. There's nothing in the workshops that isn't available to the public. There's no secrets or tricks. Nothing's classified. I put everything out there that I can. But if you want to learn, if you want to like fast track your learning, shoot me an email and we'll set up a video consult. That's the first step because we have to maintain, we have to establish a geometric level playing field of contract communication. Like right now, you can see me. I can't see you. So with the video chat, um, we're on the rule one, rule equal, and we can talk about it. Yes, David made your book. But as I said earlier in the podcast or earlier in the live stream, that book for a beginner would be like me, an English speaker, wanting to learn Russian, and someone hands me a Russian textbook written only in Russian with mistakes on every page. That's what it's like getting David's book and trying to learn it as a beginner. All right, so we've gone over 60 minutes. This is awesome. Um, there's not really any specific grammar stuff here, so I don't know if I'll repost this. But I appreciate everybody coming on here. I felt this was a very positive feed. Zero trolls. That's always a good sign. And again, if anybody wants to contact me to sign up for the workshops, to apply for the workshops, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Request the board the vessel and we'll go from there. The man that was with Miller from beginning wrote Universal Legal Technology. Yes, uh, I'm familiar with that book and Universal Legal Technology is fiction. It's adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. 100% certified. It is not correct sentence structure. But if you want some good ideas about how to use fiction against fiction, that, that book's pretty good, I would say. All right, everybody, peace.